Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and it is time for yet another pipe blend review for you. And the blend which we will be reviewing is this one. Freiburg and Schreyer Cut Virginia Plug. Now, you may have seen my first impressions video, which I posted exactly a week ago today. I was not in love with this blend. Um, it's yet another one of those what I call a crossover aromatic blends or a light aromatic blend. We just reviewed uh, Savinelli Brunello Flake on the channel and to me a blend like that that has just a little bit of topping that you can detect and as I've said a thousand times almost every mass-produced blend available on the market right now has some sort of casing, some sort of topping, some sort of added flavoring but usually the ones that I smoke anyway that added flavoring is just to sort of accentuate the actual tobacco flavors in the blend. It's not supposed to add on this other distinct, uh, I guess, category of flavor, you know, vanilla, fruit. There are all sorts of liquor extracts and things like that that are added to blends in aromatic ones. They're more to just sort of make things more consistent from year to year. People get different tobaccos in from different crops on different years, and so it's hard to make your blends taste the same year after year. And so people use toppings and casings to sort of even that out. This blend, Freiburg & Treyer, as I showed in my first impressions video, had some very distinctive notes added on top of the tobacco flavor, and I was not a fan. I've never been a fan of that. Maybe my opinion has moderated a little bit, but we'll get into that as we go through the review. The blend, as I mentioned, Freiburg & Trier Cut Virginia Plug. It is produced by K&K, Kohlhaas & Kolb in Germany. Uh, it is available nowhere right now. Um, I was looking online, at least for the major American websites, smokingpipes.com does not have it in. It comes in a 50 gram tin like this, by the way. Uh, Pipes & Cigars never seems to have it. Smoking Pipes does seem to carry it occasionally, but they don't have it now. Um, Cup of Joe's does not have it, doesn't seem to carry it. Uh, I think maybe Four Noggins does, I'm not sure. So if you're in the U.S., it might be difficult to procure a tin of this and pretty much all the Freiburg and Trier uh, tobaccos anyway. Maybe in Europe it's a little easier, but you guys are kind of have to be left to your own devices there to check that out. So right now, sorry, it's not available. The blend type though, or actually no, I'm skipping tin description. There is one on here. <clears throat> Let's see if we can read this. Freiburg and Trayer, Cut Virginia Plug. The basis of this delicious blend is a mixture of golden and orange Virginia, offering a complex natural sweetness and slight hints of lemon, an exceptional flavor of meadow honey and fruity citrus. So they're even kind of coming out and saying that there is a, a, blend, a topping added to this blend within the blend description. The blend type I'm going to call it a straight Virginia because that's mostly what it is, but I also would call this maybe a light aromatic or a crossover aromatic. The blend contains, they said golden and orange Virginias. I'm assuming by that they mean um, more bright yellow Virginias and then some darker red matured Virginias. That's at least what I'm tasting in the blend, and that's what I think that is. We have vital stats here, though. Right here on this piece of paper. Let's get to them. Flavoring. The big one. I actually did a bit of research trying to figure out exactly what was in this blend, what was added in terms of topping, and to me the consensus seems to be, and this is what I'm tasting as well, vanilla extract or some sort of vanilla flavoring and a fruit extract. Maybe an apricot-y kind of thing or a citrusy sort of thing. I'm just gonna say vanilla and fruit, and I will say this is a light topping. I'm just super sensitive to topping, to added flavoring, to detectable added flavoring, but it's light. It's not a full-on aromatic, so bear that in mind. Bear, bear that in mind throughout the entire review because I'm going to be acting like a maniac probably, and you probably won't have the same response that I do to this blend. The cut is a flake. Let me show you that right now. Freiburg and Treyer Cut Virginia Plug. Very simple label. I kind of like it classy in my opinion. Now as the name would suggest, this is a flake tobacco produced by K&K &K, as we already mentioned, but this is just the typical K&K &K flake presentation. They, they now have the round tins. Pretty much all those European manufacturers have gone for round tins for their flakes as opposed to the square ones that we used to get. Um, 
And there you go, that's the flake. Very regular looking, nicely presented, a little moist, but not too moist. It's still smokable, but I do recommend. For me, I've had the best results drying this out a bit and rubbing it out a bit as well. There you go, not a bad presentation. All right, gang, on with the vital stats. The strength on this one and the taste, we're gonna combine these two because to me, with the added flavoring that I can easily detect in this blend, it's hard for me to determine what the, the mouthfeel, the body, and then the actual flavor is in terms of strength because that added topping sort of muddies the waters. So I'm just gonna say medium for strength, the body, the mouthfeel, and medium for taste. It could be more of a medium mild in taste, but again, for me, that added vanilla fruity flavoring really, it really makes it difficult to determine that. And then the nicotine level, I'm gonna say medium slash mild on that. Moisture from tin was moist towelette in my tin anyway. And then the packaging is a 50 gram tin like this. The tin note on this, it's kind of interesting. It's changed a bit since my initial impressions. When I first smelled this, I was just really smelling the vanilla. And that was almost all I could smell in this blend. And usually when you crack a tin like this, if it has added flavoring, that initial like slap in the face of, of aroma, I guess, dissipates for after a while. This now I can smell. <sighs> I can actually smell the tobacco now. Um, I am smelling the grassy Virginias and maybe a little bit of a bready undertone. Maybe that's from the darks. But then I'm also smelling more of the fruit. So here I have uh, vanilla odor, odor has dissipated a bit, more fruit, citrus, and apricots with some grass and a little fresh bread. That's basically what I'm smelling now. Pleasant, it smells pleasant in the tin, I will admit that. And then the room note is fairly light, uh, vanilla and fruit, but then it's sort of masking the tobacco odor, under, odor underneath that. It's sort of like, if you've ever been to someone's apartment and they're just hot boxing cigarettes in there all day, with like the windows all closed and it's just stale smoke like crazy. Not a very attractive smell. And then they're like, oh, company's coming over. So let me get out the bottle of Febreze and I'll just douse the couch with that. It's like a dirty old couch that someone has been smoking in forever. And then there's this weird like, I don't know, mountain glade odor over the top of it. It never really seems right. And it's almost better just to have stale smoke or just to have the mountain glade. It's kind of like that with this blend. When you smoke it in a room, you will smell a bit of that vanilla, a bit of that fruit, but it's sort of just like riding on top of the tobacco odor underneath, which I would find perfectly acceptable. I like the smell of tobacco, but uh, I don't know, maybe if someone's a non-smoker and they don't like the smell of pipe smoke, they would appreciate that little bit of vanilla and fruit. I'm not sure. But anyway, we need to get to the actual review. I have about two thirds of the bowl remaining in my Peterson uh, spigot. Mechanically, this isn't bad. I did find for sure that if I rubbed it out, it worked better than if I folded and stuffed it. Even if I dried it a bit, it tended to do better rubbed out and it still smoked pretty wet. Um, I was definitely having to use more pipe cleaners with this blend than I normally would. It never actually bit me and that was something that I was kind of worried about when I first smoked it. I thought it seemed as though it could bite me, give me that tongue bite, but it never did. Um, and it never really smoked too hot it's actually pretty well behaved, not bad. When reading the tin description and then going by what other people who actually really like this blend have said about it, you get the impression that what they were going for was a nice melange of bright grassy Virginias, that nice darker undertone of red Virginias that can add a little bit of, you know, that moldering leaf litter maybe yeast, bread, bakery sort of sensation, all tied together with a creamy vanilla, maybe like a vanilla hazelnut sort of thing with a nice fruity undertone as well. Just this really nice balanced blend um, with a, a little bit of an extra added flavor with that creamy vanilla and fruit. But what it ends up being for me is something a little bit different. 
It did dissipate quite a bit. I don't taste the vanilla anywhere near as much as I did when I initially was smoking this. That was pretty much all I could taste initially. It's changed a bit now. What I'm tasting is a really nice mix of bright grassy Virginias with dark matured bready Virginias and then a vanilla citrus just slap a paint over the top of it and then this really chemically aftertaste. That's what I'm getting. It's not as bad for me as I initially thought. That flavor does dissipate. As, as you open the tin, it dissipates. As you smoke more of it, you notice it less. And it almost got to the point, as I was smoking it in the mornings, usually with my coffee before work, things like that, it almost got to the point where I didn't notice it as being something nagging at me or irritating me. So I didn't hate it anymore, but I never loved it, and I never even really liked it. It was just kind of there. And the flavor, as much as it wasn't, you know, paramount in my mind anymore whenever I smoked the blend, it was still there. And the aftertaste especially was still there. And kind of that mouth coaty feel that I described in the initial impressions video where you just feel as though you've eaten something really sugary. That was still always there. This is a very, very sweet blend to me. For a Virginia, Virginias are often pretty sweet on their own. Virginias have a lot of natural sugars, natural sweetness in them. This is too much, too much sweetness for me in a Virginia blend. And that was definitely something that I didn't love. So if I think about it, my opinion has improved and it's gotten to the point where I could smoke this and not hate my life while smoking it. And that's high praise, I guess, but I never ended up enjoying it that much. But you have to bear in mind that I'm a crazy person. I'm a maniac when it comes to added flavoring. And if you're not, if you're not a maniac and you like maybe a little bit of extra added something on top of your blend, I do think this is a really quality blend. It's just not for me at all. But if you're an aromatic smoker and you want to maybe cross over into English blends or unflavored blends, this might be a good crossover for you, something to get you used to more natural tobacco flavor with a little bit of that added topping on top, topping on top, vanilla and fruit extract. It might help you sort of ease into that world. And then if you're someone who, you know, isn't crazy, like I said, who does enjoy a little bit of extra flavor every once in a while, you may not be as sensitive and weird about it as I am. But for me, eh. I won't be buying Virginia, uh, cut Virginia plug again. I didn't have to buy this. It was actually donated by a very generous viewer. But Freiburg and Traer's cut Virginia plug, not for me, might be for you. Like I said, I think it's a quality blend, quality tobaccos in the blend, just not the kind of blend that I enjoy. But thank you guys so much for watching this edition of the Stuff and Things show. I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. I'll see you later.